Can artificial intelligence make your live broadcast sound better? Today, we're going to find out. A lot of churches are using a digital audio workstation to mix their broadcast mix. But sometimes it can be hard to train a volunteer to use EQ and compression to get the levels just right and get everything dialed in for your broadcast mix. So what if we let the EQ and compression get handled by an AI plugin? Today I'm going to take a look at Neutron from Isotope to see if its AI mixing feature can help you dial in your broadcast mix. I'm testing it as if I had a live band for inputs, not just recorded on playback. If you want to see more of how I set up my rig for filming tutorials, I've got a video for that. I'll drop it down in the description below. Now, when you load up Neutron for the first time, you can load a preset from their preset library, and sometimes those are helpful and sometimes they're not. So it's kind of hit or miss there. When I was going through, some of them worked, some of them didn't. Then you select which type of input and mash the track assistant. As you play your input, then it listens to it and makes adjustments with EQ, compression, and an exciter. That's exciting. And by the way, I'm using Neutron 2 that I bought with my own money. So. There's no sponsored post. This is just me experimenting and figuring stuff out. So let's take a look at Neutron. I've got it pulled up on the piano and see how we can get things started. Uh, when you pull it up, this is what it looks like. You can go ahead and choose a preset. There's a couple presets we can look at here. I uh, found for the piano, either the grand piano or the classical piano control. We'll look at both of those. Let me hit play so you can hear what those sound like compared to, you know, bypassed or normal. Uh, just so you know, there's some options there. I think I like the way that the classical piano control sounds a little bit better, but let's see what happens when we do the track assistant and see what presets it comes up with. And we've got to hit play on our DAW even if we're in input mode. So we can see that it did some dynamic EQ and in addition to some overall EQ changes, uh, it's pulling out somewhere around 800, uh, 786, and it's got some dynamic EQ right down here around 400 where it's pushing that down as it's going. And it's got a little bit of a high shelf. That's what they heard when they did it. Uh, it's also got multi-band compression. So it's compressing the lower middle band differently than it is the upper band. Uh, to get those different. You can see there's a different ratio and different attack and release times uh, on those. So that's interesting that it did that way. Then it has an overall compressor. I think it's in vintage mode. And you can see that there's a difference uh, in the way that this happens. This is more like overall levels, uh, whereas this one is more tone shaping and trying to get the transients just right. And then there's an exciter on the back side too. Now, one other thing to make sure that you do, and this is for later, is make sure that you label up here what the track name is. Uh, later on, when we look at the masking feature, uh, that'll be really helpful for selecting the right one so it's not just like Neutron 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, let's compare it bypassed and in and what the track assistant did and what it was just like flat. Now that sounds good. Let's hear what it's like in the rest of the mix as well.
So by itself, it made a difference, but in context, it really stepped out a bit. That brightness and that cut, probably from the multiband compression, really helped it to stand out. So Neutron was a win on this input. Oh, by the way, these tracks have bus compression on them, the same way that I set up all my broadcast mixes to make it a lot easier to mix into. I also described the system in a lot more detail in my broadcast audio course, which is available for standalone purchase or through the Worship Sound Wisdom University membership. You can find more details for that down in the description below. So now let's compare and see what it sounds like with Neutron on everything and bypassing it so that it's just the fader levels and the bus compression on our signals. So let's hear what it sounds like with Neutron activated. I went through and did it on all the tracks, either tried to find a preset that worked or doing it with all the tracks with uh, this AI mixing to see if that worked. So let's unmute the vocals for now and take a listen to the mix with Neutron bypassed and then with Neutron on all the tracks as well. So you can tell stuff got quite a bit brighter when we turned it on, got a little bit clearer, a little bit more defined, and that's cool. I like that. One thing to note though, is that for all of this mixing, you know, I'm getting the balance right on the faders, and that's of course step one. And I also have my buses set up with drums, instruments, vocals, so that I can compress those together as a group so that I get some group compression there. So even with the plugins bypassed, we are still getting some dynamic range control there. And I have the compressor and limiter bypassed on my main output at the moment. So that's what we're hearing now. So I'd say there's a marked improvement for that mix. Things get a lot clearer except for the live vocals. I'm not sure that this AI mixing thing has the idea that these vocals are so warm due to the proximity effect from live vocal mics. Maybe the high shelf is on there to make it cut a little bit more, but to me, it needs a whole lot more work on the vocal EQ to sound natural and normal. You can also switch on the high pass filter and that helps a lot. I don't know why they didn't do that automatically, but it's a lot easier to do one thing with a high pass filter than it is to do all the other compression and EQ changes that they did. To give another comparison, I set up a mix where I did all my normal stuff that I do with a broadcast mix for EQ, compression, but just the simple stuff. I didn't use any dynamic EQ, just static EQ changes. The same kind of stuff that you might get when you're using a stock plugin on your digital audio workstation or even a console. I had to redo some of the fader positions because the gain structure changed, but I wanted to see if my version, which was pretty simple with EQ and compression, sounded similar or better to the Neutron version. Basically, I just followed my own advice that I put in the live mixing field guide. It's all my starting places for EQ and compression settings, and they work a lot of the time, but you still have to use your ear to get it dialed in and figure out how much or where to cut and boost things. You can pick up your copy through the link in the description below, but let's take a listen back and forth to see what it sounds like. All right, to compare these two, we're gonna go back and forth between these scenes with Neutron on with the AI version and one that I made with Neutron, the same tools, nothing dynamic, nothing you know funky, just compression and EQ and kind of my starting places. So this scene here is my starting places and you'll see, you know, we'll just pop up one of these. I think the toms are pretty indicative of what it's like, what they did and then what I did. And you can see in here, kind of the difference there on what I chose to do and what the AI chose to do and just how 
pretty simple things that you do with just plain old EQ and compression make a difference in the mix. So let's take a listen to that. Now there's one more feature of Neutron that I wanted to take a look at, and that's the masking feature. When you're getting set up, be sure to label all your tracks in Neutron. I know you already labeled them when they're on your channels, but putting them in Neutron is gonna be handy for this reason. You can turn on the masking function, which listens to another channel and shows potential spots where one frequency might build up in both of those inputs. So what do you do with this information? Well, then you cut in one of the spots on one EQ or the other. It's really handy because it will pull up the other channel's EQ so that you can have the controls in front of you to know which one you want to choose. So for this example, I've soloed the instrument bus, so we're just going to be hearing the bass, guitars, and keyboards. And this is where you can dial in kind of your EQ across with the masking feature. We're trying to make all these fit together. So we can, if we hit this masking button and we're on acoustic guitar and we want to look at a electric guitar, when we hit play, it will listen to both of these. This is the EQ for the electric guitar, this is the EQ for the acoustic guitar, and it will show where the hot spots are where there could be some masking. So let me hit play and we'll see what it's like. So now if we were having problems with our electric guitar and our acoustic, that would make them stick out a little bit better. One area that might be more of a problem than that one is the electric guitar with the other electric guitar. So let's turn on masking for that and go to electric guitar two. Now we can look at this and see what it's like. One thing I didn't tell you earlier, but it's kind of fun. They do have the learn button here. Uh, so if you don't want to do the whole track assistant with all the different processors, and if you just want it to use it to kind of auto EQ, you know, that button will do that same process, but just with your EQ. So let's play both electrics together and see how we can get them to uh, come together a little bit better, uh, have a little more space for each other. So you can hear when I bypass the EQs, they each kind of got a little more cluttery. Uh, with the EQs in, they each had their own little bit of space. So again, in the mid-range instruments, we're trying to create a bed for the vocals. We're trying to make sure that there's a good solid foundation connecting the bass and the drums to the vocals. This just helps you clean that up so each one has a little bit more space. So in summary, does AI mixing take care of everything that you need to do so that you can just manage faders and have a good sounding mix? 
Not really. We're not there quite yet. Or at least we haven't taught the AI what to do to make it sound like the way that we want to sound like. Can Neutron clue you into some frequencies that might be masking one another? Absolutely. It's essential that we learn how to listen to two inputs at once when we're EQing stuff so that we can make room for other inputs, not just make everything sound good on its own. I've even used the learn function on the EQ on voiceover tracks to make sure that I'm really nailing the balance between fullness and presence and not getting those nasally weird artifacts. And after listening to this, I'm a pretty big fan of that exciter. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up and subscribe for more content on making your broadcast mix and live mixes sound even better. Be sure to check out some more videos over here. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.